Hello everyone, I'm Foxcode, and sorry I've been away for so long. Um, I got a job, amazingly, about three weeks ago, so that's why I've been busy, a bit preoccupied, settling into that. But now I am back, and luckily my job is actually to do with programming, it is game programming, making HTML5 games. So, I thought I'd give you a quick tutorial on how to do this, basically because... It's got a lot of advantages over some of the other tutorials I've made. For example, I have a lot of videos about C++, but the main problem with that is you have to download the IDE, you get people using different versions of Visual Studio, all these weird compile errors. It's kind of a bit of a nightmare to manage. So with an HTML5 game, you just have some basic wrapper or engine that someone else has made. In this case, it is going to be my company's. I will not deny it. And I will show you that in a minute. And then you just write some simple JavaScript code and it just works. I mean, we can get something up and running that you can see in the next uh, 15 minutes, hopefully, because I'm supposed to start work after that, working from home today. Geo, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, let's just get to the website. So open Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use, that will become relevant later. And we want to go to clockworkchili.com and click on the Wade, download Wade. Now, Wade is a web application development engine or environment. Doesn't actually stand for that. Seriously, I work for them. I don't actually know what it stands for. That's terrible. Something along those lines. Basically, it is a game engine for HTML5. And you write in JavaScript. Remember, JavaScript is the language we're using, not Java. Completely different, not even remotely similar. Okay, so you go ahead and download Wade, and of course I've already done. Uh, I have already done this, and I will just check in my downloads folder, and I will extract that right here. Now, normally I would move it out of my downloads folder, but for me today it's not really a big issue. So we've got Wade uh, 1.3.3 is the current version. If you're watching this tutorial later on, the version might have gone up a bit, but we're just going to use the very basics of Wade, and I don't think they're going to change much in the near future. So. We have an index.html file. We can ignore style. We can ignore Euler. Uh, well, you shouldn't really ignore those, but basically it means you can do whatever you want with it for free for now. And we've got nothing else. So let's just go here, index, and edit with Notepad. Now, I've got Notepad++, so don't be alarmed, but you can just do this with Notepad as well. And I'm just going to close that. <coughs> Something else I had open. Now, we see this line wade.init test.js. Now, that's just telling Wade to start in this JavaScript file, but this JavaScript file doesn't exist. We've not made it yet, so let's just get rid of that comment, and I'm going to rename this game.js. You don't have to, but that's what I'm going to do. Now, we're going to create a new file, and of course, you just make sure it's in the same directory as the index folder here. I know it's a bit confusing if you're not used to Notepad++. And I just thought I really should increase the font size here, shouldn't I? Where's font size in Notepad++? I don't know, I'm a newbie. Oh, I can zoom in and out! Oh, that's easier. Really? Does that work? Alright, so let's just save this as... What was it? Game.js? You have to save it as the same thing you did in the index file. And make sure it's on all types. So there we go. <coughs> Game.js, indeed it does match. Excellent. Now, I'm just going to quickly test this zoom. Um, can you zoom? Oh, yeah, that's going to be helpful. Okay, so I'll keep it zoomed in like this so it's easier for you guys to see. And the first thing we need to do is create something called app equals function, I do believe. It's actually a while since I've done this. I'm surprised it didn't download a default gem. What's it called? Something file. Default JavaScript file. I'm surprised it didn't um, download a template. Oh. Anyway, we need a this dot init function, and we need a this dot load function. I'm actually gonna have to check this as right after because I haven't looked at the basics of this for a while. So, in load, this is gets called straight away when we go to our HTML file. We need to load an image. We want an image in our game. So what I'm going to use is just a ball. All it is is a 10 pixel by 10 pixel image. I'll show you. Um, I made it earlier. Here we go. And you can use something similar. You can just go on paint and fill a rectangle. Or if you want to do what I did, use GIMP, which is a free image editing software. And just make an image of a ball or something. So there we go. That's my ball. It's just a red dot. Okay. 
So what we're going to do in here is wade.load image and then it's just going to be ball.png. Very simple. Now in it, this is the first code really that's going to be run. After we've loaded all our images, this is where the interesting stuff happens. But we're not going to put anything in there quite yet. We're going to make something that my boss doesn't like because it's object oriented enough. <laughs> Not necessary, really, which is kind of true. It's just different ways of coding. I've actually learned quite a lot since I started just doing things different ways. It's quite interesting. So we're going to make a new function and assign it to ball. So we're having a ball variable. Now, this ball, we need to load the image. So we've loaded the image already, but we need to assign it to a sprite. So we're going to have var um, ball sprite equals new sprite. Ugh, I always do that. I always hold down shift for too long. And we're going to call it, well, sorry, we're not going to call it anything. It has to be this. So it's not loading the image again. It's just assigning it to this sprite so we can make use of it. Then we're going to have a scene object um, equals new scene object. A scene object is just a way of managing multiple sprites or multiple other entities. It doesn't have to be a sprite. It could be many other things. It could be text. It might be a particle emitter, something along those lines. Ball sprite. But in this case, we just want to do that. So... Excellentio. Now, what I want this ball to do is I want it to spawn in the middle of the screen, go off in a random direction, and bounce around. That's basically all I want it to do. So, we need to set its, its initial position will be 0, 0, and in Wade, 0, 0 is the very center of the HTML5 canvas you're on, so it'll be in the middle. So, actually, my webcam's reversed, isn't it? Okay, so this is 0, 0. Okay, if your screen is... 2,000 pixels wide, which it won't be, that's a weird number, but um, that would mean minus 1,000 is there, positive 1,000 is over there, so it's you just need to be aware, 0, 0 is the middle of the screen, not at the top left, which is what most um, appies use. So, let's keep going. We're not going to add our scene object to Wade yet, we're going to do that right down here, so I'll just write Wade dot add scene object. All object. Actually, one thing we can do, we can run this to see if it actually works, and I think we're going to do that now. We'll get the running out of the way, then we'll make it fancy. So, I just need to make a new version of ball, so we're going to say bar ball in it. You can call it whatever you want. Actually, oh, in it is a bad word to use there. Let's just call as ball, ball will work. As long as it's not capital B as well, because then it would match that function, which is dodgy. So, we're going to create new ball. Um... I think that's all we need. Or I could add it as a behavior. Ooh, do I want to do that? Yeah, I think I do. I'm tempted, I'm very tempted. Actually, no, let's just see what this does. I've got no idea. Let's see what it all does. So we're creating a ball which creates a sprite, an object, adds that to the scene. All right, I'm just, I just want to see what it does. So now we need a browser, and all we're going to do is drag our index.html file over a browser icon. Now, you have to do something special to make this work, and one of the things you might have to do might make this tutorial kind of awkward. So you need to get your Chrome shortcut if you use Chrome. I'll explain the others in a minute. You need to right-click on it. And notice in this shortcut thing, there's nothing on the end of chrome.exe. We want to copy this shortcut, which I've got down here, and we want to add dash dash allow file access from files. Now, I'll copy that into here so you can see a bit better. There we go. We need to add that onto Chrome. All this does is it allows us to run files on our computer in the browser. Normally, a lot of web browsers don't let you run local scripts. Now, my version of Firefox actually does let me do this. So, I'm just going to use that for now, but I will show with Chrome as well. So, we've got this. We're just going to drag index.html over to... I'll do it for Chrome first. And we've got a red dot in the middle of the screen, which, sure enough, is what we're going to get. That's all we've coded so far. And if I do the same for Firefox... Do I have a Firefox icon? I've got that one. Can you drag onto the little ones? Ah, I've got one there. Let's just drag that onto there. Okay, now I prefer Chrome. I honestly think it's better, even though you've got to do the faffy thing, because it's got this. Now, Firefox does have something similar, but Chrome's is better in my opinion. You've got this window, and if you start having errors in your code, so let's say I try and load a sprite that doesn't exist by doing that, 
if I refresh this, trying to get image ball.apng without loading it first. That is a useful error message. A lot of things are not that nice, so that's really, really cool. Anyway, we've got a ball. I've just You can refresh. If you save your code, refresh, it'll reload it all. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. So quick. Anyway, this ball's a bit boring. It's not moving, so we want to give it a velocity. So we're going to have ball object dot velocity. Now, in JavaScript, you can just create, you can add variables to existing objects as you go. It's quite an, it's a new concept to a C programmer, but it's pretty cool. So, I'm just going to create an object here. We're going to create x velocity is going to be, well, we want some minimum value. It can't be too low. Let's have it at, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do math dot random minus 0.5. So, that'll get a positive, no, that will get a number between minus 0.5 and positive 0.5. Then we're going to times that by 10. We'll times it by, no, we'll times it by 8, and then we'll add 2 to it. What that's going to do, it's a bit complicated, I know, is it's going to assign a value to x that's some number between negative 4, I think, and positive 4, and then it's going to add 2 to it or whatever it is, but that's actually bad because if it was a negative number, that would take away it. Let's just get rid of that. Let's just do this and see what it does. Um, I just didn't want it to ever be 0, and it could be in this case, but it's fine for now. Now we need to add our do, 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 something or other. We need to add our y value, and we're going to just copy and paste this bit, and that looks pretty good to me, and then we need to close that. So I've probably made a mistake somewhere, but that does look okay-ish for now. So that's going to give our ball an initial velocity. Every time we run this program, it should have a different velocity because we've used random. Right, now we need to actually apply that velocity because at the moment it doesn't do anything. We're just storing something. So <clears throat> we need to have an onUpdate function. Now, first of all, I'm going to add true here. That just means that this scene object will listen to wait events, one of which is on update. So now we need to tell the ball what to do on update. So ball object dot on update equals function. Now Wade will automatically call this because we've told it to listen to events, including the on update event, and ball object has been added to the scene here. You must, however, make sure this bit goes before where you add it to the scene, otherwise it glitches out for some reason. I don't know why. <coughs> on, on, on update, okay, so the first thing we need is the current position. So let's just have var xpars equals ball object dot get position dot dot x <coughs> same for y pause I'm gonna have to hurry up I don't have much time left dot y excellent let's see five minutes before nine o'clock um x pause y pause equals that blah 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 okay so now what we want to do is our ball's gonna fly off somewhere in fact let's just have a look on updates not currently doing anything useful, but we have added the velocity, so let's see if the velocity works. Unable to load. Okay, so clearly we've made a mistake. Let's have a look. What have I done? Can anyone spot it? What's the stupid mistake? Alright, let's let's do some debugging. Let's comment out this line and see if it runs. Yeah, okay, so that line's at fault. Oh, what stupid thing have I done here? Yeah, too many closing brackets. What are these for? I think. Well, now we've got the ball. But it isn't moving. And the reason it's not moving is because we're not actually using this velocity yet. We're setting it, but we're not using it. So, back on track. We're, we're, we're in the game still. So what we need to do is first, let's just say, all object dot set position to x pause and y pause. And then all we need to do is update these positions with the velocity, which I'm going to do now. So x pause plus equals all object. Oh, sorry, we can use this because we are inside ball object, so this 
actually is that ball object. So I actually should be doing this. Sorry about the confusion, guys. Um, this dot get, no, what am I doing? This dot velocity, velocity, velocity dot x. So that's um, this that we defined earlier. Cool, cool. And then we're going to do the same for y pos. We're going to plus equal the velocity onto it. So we're just taking the old position and adding velocity to it to get a new position and then assigning it here. So now if we refresh, yay, we've got a ball that moves. But oh no, it goes off the screen. Now, of course, that was going to happen. And we're actually getting quite close to being able to make Pong, though. I'm not going to do that today because I've got three minutes. So I'm going to have to go really, really quick. Ah, and not open the streaming software. Wrong window. And we're going to go back here. On update equals function, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we need to add some code here to check if off screen. So if the ball goes too low down, all we need to do is flip its y velocity. If it goes too far to the left or right, we just need to flip its x velocity, which is really easy. So if wade.get screen width, so we're getting the whole monitor width. In my case, it's um, 1920. Divide it by 2, because remember, 0, 0 is at the center, so the width of half the screen is the weighed screen width over 2. So if um, x position is less than that, which means if it's off the left of the screen, we need to reverse the velocity. Or if tabs versus spaces. I prefer um, spaces, but my boss has got me using tabs for now. Um, if x boss is greater than weighed.get screen width, Oh my god, what? Whenever I'm doing one of these videos, I type like crap. I can type really fast normally. I'm about 120 lumen word per minute type, and I just can't do it when I'm being watched. Also, that should be a minus. Um, next one gets through. Yeah, that's right. So, if it's off the left of the screen, basically, or the right, we're just going to do ball object dot velocity dot x times equals minus one. So that'll just reverse it. And then we're going to copy and paste this and do it for the y. Now this is really simple. It's just y, y, get screen height instead of get screen width. Ball object y. Dot. That should be it, I think, actually. Let's just um, have a look. It works, it works. Okay, now I'm just going to demonstrate this with a smaller browser window. So you can see that it's adapting to the size, and that's what Wade's really good at. If I, oh, I'm not hosting it locally. If I was hosting this locally, I could run this on my phone. Exact same code, it would work flawlessly. That's the best thing about Wade, it runs on anything. Um, when I went for the interview for this job, actually, I made Pong in Wade. And I showed, I wanted to show my girlfriend it, so I just went, okay, do this. And she went onto my local web space, and she, it would run on her iPhone, straight away her iPhone S. So it's really good. It works on all devices, pretty much. I've never found one that it doesn't. And it's just a cool way to get into it. Now, it wouldn't take much to make this code into Pong. So I just thought this is quite a good introduction, and I might go and make this into Pong for you guys at some point. And I'm just going to make my code smaller because I like Notepad... Like it's normal size, that'll do for me, I think. Um, actually, is there a... What is, does it tell me what zoom we're in? Restore default zoom. Yeah, I thought that looked wrong. Okay, so this is our whole program. It is 46 lines long, everyone. That's it. And if you want to get clever, you can do this. I'll just let you... Do, I want to do this just before I go because it's funny. Now I'm doing a single line for loop, which is why I don't need the brackets, but still that's quite nasty. You shouldn't really do that. Yay! Lots of balls. That sounded wrong. And <laughs> with that, I will see you guys later. I hope you enjoyed it.